really incredible. And we're right in the heart of the moorns here, which is so, so beautiful. It's a great place to think about revival, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just a, a good place for us to, to really focus for a few minutes on what it means for God to pour out his spirit and revival power. Yeah. Throughout history, revival has come. Uh, it's when God does an amazing thing, an outpouring, when people realize their spiritual need, uh, where they turn to Jesus to really seek forgiveness, uh, to seek a savior. And those times are, are special times, uh, really that, uh, that God does an amazing work. And even in here in Ulster, uh, back in 1859, there was that amazing revival that not only transformed lives, but transformed communities, transformed this whole nation. And that's what we desire. But it starts, it starts uh, with us. Um, a verse which I really keep coming back to is 2 Chronicles 7.14, a verse that's been used quite a bit even during this COVID-19 time. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray to me and seek my face, I will uh, come, I will hear from heaven and uh, I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. If my people um, my people is, uh, I believe, the church. They're the people who belong to Jesus. If we humble ourselves, uh, the humbling is uh, coming to that place where we realize we can't do it by ourselves. Um, so often we've put our programs together, we've tried to do things without the Holy Spirit, without God, and the result is that it didn't happen. We have to humble ourselves and realize we need the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's the most important thing. Nothing happens without the Holy Spirit. And if we pray, and we look at revivals in the past, there's always one common denominator, uh, prayer. Prayer is the key to uh, starting revival. And this is the time when the church needs to get back on its knees to pray, to call out to the Lord. And uh, to seek my face, the Lord says. Um, that's intimacy, that's uh, coming into relationship with Him. That's putting Him first, not having anything else in the way of Him, looking into His face. He will hear. He will hear from heaven. In other words, he will respond to us. He will uh, come to us when uh, we cry out to him. And not only that, um, he will forgive us. He's, he's the Lord who is merciful. And sometimes we think others need to be forgiven, but I believe we've slipped away from the Lord over the years. For revival to come, it starts with our hearts. It starts with repentance. We have to be the one that repents. So revival is from God. It's, it's, it is a work from the Holy Spirit and uh, it's not something that we can uh, manufacture ourselves. It is our dependence on God, coming to God, seeking Him. And Luke chapter 11 verse 13 says, If you then, though you're evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in Heaven give the Holy Spirit to you if you ask Him? And that's what we need to do. We need to ask Him. Thank you, Roland. Uh, the reality is that you and I have never Either of us have never had the privilege of, of living through what you'd call a, a full-blown revival. Yeah. We have been privileged to see God move in different ways and to see His Spirit at work, but never a, a full-blown revival. I, I love to read about revival, but I actually want to see revival and not just read about it. It's, you know, I've read about the 1859 revival here in Ulster and how that started in a, in a schoolhouse where four people met to pray. and you know, in, in this province and actually across this nation. As a result, there were thousands, tens of thousands of people who began to follow Jesus and, and, and new churches planted and, and just a, a, an incredible work of God. Like one of the, the churches in this diocese, Shankill Parish in Lurgan, was built as a result of the 1859 revival. And, and other churches as well were built as a result of the 1859 revival. And we just long for that sort of move of, of God's Spirit where we see God move in power and we see lots of people swept into his kingdom but you're right it starts where the, the people of God begin to cry out to God and recognize their own need as well. I, I love the way that Dr. Helen Rosevere uh, told the story of uh, how she prayed for a revival. She, she actually was in East Africa at the sort of tail end of the East African revival. She tells a story about how she was sitting one evening with one of the old um, 
leaders. He was both a church leader but also uh, a community leader and, uh, and she was really frustrated that God was using uh, others but didn't seem to be using her and he said to her, the problem Helen is that we see too much Helen and we don't see enough of Jesus and what we need to see is, is this, we need to see in Helen the cross, the cross out life and, uh, life. and, and he drew a circle and he said, Helen, stand in that circle and pray that a revival would start inside that circle. And, and you know, I think that's what many of us as, as church leaders need to do, actually, as clergy, as, as ordinary folks in our parishes, as Sunday school teachers. If we want to see a real move of God, let's pray that it would start in us. And, and revival is about repentance. It's about holiness. It's about crying out to God because we're burdened to see others come to Christ. And we, we need to see just a mighty move of God that stirs our hearts to seek God in that sort of way. And, and you know, if revival comes, it's not going to be all orderly and all nice the way we might like it. But I'll tell you something, I'd, I'd rather have the mess of a nursery, as somebody said, than the order of a graveyard. And maybe in the Church of Ireland, it's time that we had a little bit of mess, uh, the mess of a nursery, where we see people coming to faith in Christ, being swept into the kingdom of God, people on their knees before God in repentance and in prayer, and a real move of God. You know, you know what, well, let's pray for revival, even as we stand here in this beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, I had the privilege of standing here with an old man called Robert McKeamy. He was an old, old man. I stood here with him back in the 1990s. He came to preach in Kilkeel when I was rector there. And he had lived through the East African revival. And, and he talked about the brokenness of people repenting. And he talked about the thousands that came to faith. Same Holy Spirit, same God. Let's pray for a move of that Spirit in our day. So we pray, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. In this land, south and north, east and west, please pour out your Holy Spirit upon your church. Come Holy Spirit and in every parish in this diocese, bring us to a place where we are seeking God, where we're praying that your Holy Spirit would move, where there's a deep reverence and holiness towards the awesomeness and power and authority of who God is, where we want to obey all of his word and keep all of his commandments, and where we long and pray and cry out for a move of God where we would see the people of God come alive in the things of God, where we would see miracles of, of healing and where we would see many being swept in to the kingdom of God as they turn to Christ and give their lives to Christ. So Lord, would you in your mercy visit your church again and revive your church again. In Jesus' name, amen. And Lord, forgive us for the times when we've held onto our little glass of water thinking we've got a lot, when behind this wall there's millions of gallons. There's more, Lord, and you have got so much more to give to us, so much more you want to give to us. Lord, I pray that you will pour out your Holy Spirit, that we will uh, want more of you, that we will never be content with what we have, knowing that there is always more. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit in our day that we may see revival.